welcome everyone to the class of marketing research and analysis. Uh, today we will be continuing with our uh, from our last session. In the last session we were discussing about regression and we had done with uh, simple regression and then we started with multiple regression. We did with uh, multiple regression is a case when uh, there is uh, more than one predictor variable uh, and uh, uh, there is uh, a single dependent variable right. So, uh, when you have more than uh, you know uh, one uh, independent or predictor variables then it is a case of uh, multiple regression. Uh, but then the question uh, there are few uh, special cases uh, in during uh, a multiple regression test which we need to check and today we will be covering that. So, how to conduct this multiple regression which we have solved through some cases uh, have by hand and then we did through SPSS also. But then uh, one problem that arises is to sometimes we need to understand which predictors are most uh, important during any uh, for any uh, during any study right or any research uh, study. So, to do that we have two uh, methods which we will be conducting today we will be doing today one is called the stepwise regression and other is called the hierarchical regression. So, what stepwise regression means and what hierarchical regression means I will be explaining both of it uh, systematically right. Uh, sometimes people uh, think it is uh, very confusing and for some people they think it is very easy. Now, it is none of it actually you need to understand what exactly stepwise means and what are the other ways of entering the data. In fact, stepwise is nothing but the, and hierarchical is nothing but the way you enter the data into the regression equation right in the, in the case of multiple regression. So, let us see. So, as it says in multiple regression context researchers are very often interested in determining the best predictors in the analysis. So, which is the best predictor? I have three predictors or four predictors let us say predictors are my independent variables which one is the best out of it? How do we know? So, the researcher may simply be interested in explaining the most variability or the one which explains the highest in the dependent variable with the fewest possible predictors. So, if I can predict uh, I can create a model which can explain me the highest variance right the variation with the lowest number of predictors or independent variables then it is more uh, it is a good model and why because in research one of the conditions is that research says that it should be parsimonious in nature that means you should not be utilizing unnecessarily uh, excessive data or excessive variables ok. So, the idea is to have the best output with the minimum input ok. Two approaches to determine the quality of the predictors are as mentioned earlier stepwise regression and hierarchical regression let us see. What is the stepwise regression let us see. So, this is frequently used in psychological research to evaluate the order of the importance of variables and to select useful set of variables. So, what it says in which order should I enter? Why is the order important? The question that might be coming to your mind when I am saying this is why is the order important? If I if I place in any uh, way the variables how does it matter? It does matter it matters because when I am putting in the variables in a haphazard manner uh, then it what happens is suppose I put in the first variable and then when I put in the second variable. So, what happens is when I put in the second variable automatically there is a change in the first variable also in the coefficient of the first variable. So, because of this I should always have a logical flow of entering the variables right. So, if I am using a logic let us say the first variable is the one which has got the highest explanation power then the second one has got the second best explanation power, the third has got the third best explanation power then what happens I am more in a logical way I am, I am able to explain the things right. It involves developing a sequence of linear models through variable entry as determined by computer algorithms that can be viewed as a variation of the forward selection. So, if you have done regression on SPSS or mini tab or where you will see that there are two methods called the forward and the backward selection method right. So, the forward selection method is very very close to the stepwise uh, you know regression method, but then what is the difference there must be some difference otherwise there would not have been two names correct I will explain that. So, but understand in the forward regression uh, selection method what we do is we try to select the first predictor variable which has the highest r square or the highest explanation right. Since r square is my explanation explanatory power. So, highest r square which shows I will use that as my first variable. 
second I will use my the, the next one which uh, uses the second highest exponential power. So, and I go on till the end right and the condition here is that I am not omitting any variable I am just entering the variables during a forward selection. In the case of backward selection what happens I take all the variables at one time and find out the r square and then I find out which one of them is the weakest and I start eliminating one by one till I reach a model after which there is no more improvement. Okay. However, true stepwise entry differs from forward entry in that at each step of a stepwise analysis the removal of each entered predictor is also considered. So, difference between forward and stepwise is that although they look similar the approach is similar the difference is that in the forward as I had said you do not think of removing anything right. So, if are, there are 3 variables the first, second, third I am including all the 3 in the study and I am trying to check what is the change in the r square when I am introducing x 1 then I am introducing x 2 and finally, x 3. But in the step wise the difference is that when I introduce x 1 nothing is there, but when I introduce x 2 I will try to see what is the change in now x 1 whether x 1 is actually now contributing or it is no more contributing why, why, why will it happen why will it happen why will such a situation occur you need to understand that this is sometimes sometimes you can understand as this is nothing but an interaction. So, when a new variable is entering because of the interaction or the maybe there is some kind of a correlation between these two variables because of the which the their own property changes right. So, now the property because of the change in the property it could so happen that this new the earlier variable which was the strongest variable has somehow become a weak variable because of the presence of this in uh, for in uh, for example, I can quote from the Indian mythology there was the Mahabharata war in the Mahabharata war Bhishma there was a character called Bhishma who was a great warrior right. So, Bhishma was entered into the uh, you know war as a leader right as the defense uh, head then one time they found to in order to defeat Bhishma they introduced a new variable was introduced this character was a transgender. So, Bhishma had promised that I would not fight to anybody who is a lady right she was half lady. So, she I would not fight. So, with the presence of this x 2 new variable when this new variable came into play the x 1 which was a very powerful variable which was explaining highest or was a defense leader it automatically became a weak character and because of the presence of x 2 x 1 became a redundant character and it was removed Bhishma was killed in the war he did not raise his bow and arrow. So, sometimes a very powerful variable can also become weak due to the presence of a new variable right. So, that is why stepwise regression considers the removal also during the process. The entered predictors are deleted in subsequent steps if they no longer contribute appreciable unique predictive power to the regression when considered in combination with the newly entered predictors. So, if in it is a now combination in combination how are they performing sometimes the performance may increase which is a symbiotic relationship sometimes the performance may decrease because of the coming of the new variable right step limitations what are the limitations of this stepwise method it is not key this method is not without limitation you, you should not blindly get into this method stepwise regression will typically not result in the best set of predictors and could even relate result in selecting none of the best predictors how we will see and I give an example. The order of variable entry can be important how do you choose the order of variable you can choose it through the correlation highest correlation value or just take the t value now how do you do that. So, simply you take y you take x 1 ok find a regression uh, suppose there are x 1 x 2 x 3 right. So, 3 independent equations I will form and I will run it y and x 1 1 equation y and x 2 another equation y and x 3 another equation and I will see the t coefficient in uh, all the 3 cases. The one which is the highest I will select it as my first entry variable suppose x t x 2 x t x 2 sorry <laughs> is having the highest t value then that one will be entered into the stepwise regression first ok x 2. Second after doing this I will again run a regression equation now how do I run now then I will run by a combination x 2 and x 1 x 2 and x 3 ok. Now 
So, two, two equations one this and the other is this. So, when I am running now I will see which one is giving me a larger contribution. So, accordingly suppose uh, x 2 and x 1 is giving me a larger contribution t value then I will select x 1 as the next entry variable. So, first I had entered x 2 then I had entered x 3 or x 1 and the remaining is obviously x 3. Okay. So, this is how you do each time you do regression. So, there will be multiple regression equations. So, sometimes it is very difficult to do it by hand you can use the software. Okay. If any of the predictors are correlated with each other if the predictors the independent variables are correlated the relative amount of variance in the criterion variable the dependent right explained by each of the predictors can change drastically if they are correlated they are correlated then if it is a positive correlation maybe it will improve if it is a negative correlation it will decrease right when the order of entry is changed that is what it says let us take this example stepwise selection of a team a team of let us say uh, basketball players or cricket players whatever first picks the best potential player. So, which we did it right for example, x 2 then in the context of the characteristics of this player in the context of the characteristics because you have taken already x 2 now we have to take we can take x 1 or x 3 right picks the second best which you did and then proceeds to pick the rest of the 5 players in this manner maybe this is a basketball team. Okay. So, basketball team. So, I need 5 players. So, let us say uh, or any sport you can think of. So, I have selected 5 players. Okay. Alternatively, there is another method also 5 potential players which play together best as a team are selected. So, one way is through the stepwise what I did was I can select one by one the best then the next best then the next best up to 5 people or I can also select a team of 5 players by using my logic ki sometimes the best 5 may not uh, may be best on paper, but when it comes to reality on the field their combined team game as a team uh, they do not perform well. But there can be other 5 team players who when they join together that makes a very formidable strong team. But if you go by your uh, you know uh, the first method then they will not be selected. So, the question is alternatively it says 5 potential players which play together best as a team as a team are selected. The team that is picked via this method might not have any of the players from the stepwise pick team and could perform much better. So, what I mean to say here is although stepwise method is a very good method very powerful method, but sometimes stepwise method does not yield the desired result right and rather it gives you a very distorted result which people ignore they try to blindly use the methods and that is where they uh, you know get into trouble. So, how to do this stepwise regression and then I will tell you what is the alternative. So, which here we said the 5 potential players which play together as a team. So, how do I select as a team? So, I will explain that is that will come through the hierarchical regression method right. So, let us first complete this stepwise regression how to do this stepwise regression in SPSS. So, this is a case which I have taken from a book I was reading. So, it was uh, this is uh, you know related with uh, how much time a person takes to graduate how much year or time it takes to graduate D is dependent. So, year uh, to graduate right graduation is dependent on it says factors like the mother's education level mother's education level is this one x m let us say plus father's education level x f right plus parents income x i plus the faculty interaction. So, x f faculty interaction. So, these 4 variables it says will affect the dependent variable the criterion variable graduation graduating time how much time it takes to graduate right. So, how to do that? So, you can see I will uh, just show you then I will get into uh, uh, SPSS. So, you go to linear regression right go to linear regression and then you take all the variables the dependent variable to the dependent side and the independent variables to the independent side and here uh, you use the stepwise. So, I will let me go to the data set right. So, this is the data set I, will, I was talking about right. So, years to graduate has been given right these are some of the years to graduate the education of the mother is given to you the father's education is given to you, the family income is given to you and the faculty interaction level is given to you. So, what I can do is 
I can simply first to understand the correlation among these variables I can just simply go to analyze and do a correlation right and I will take uh, uh, let me first change the variable view. So, this is also scale this is not a ok. So, analyze correlate bivariate and you take all the variables right 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 right and we will run a correlation and just see ki how this looks. So, if we look at this correlation you can see that years of graduation which is the dependent variable has strongly correlated with the mother's education may be minus it is a negative. So, do not worry because what does it mean negative means one unit year increase that means with a unit increase in the mother's education let us say there is a decrease in the years graduation. So, it has it should be inversely related logically also you think if the education of the mother is more then we would say think that she can contribute more to the child and the years to graduate should come down. So, that is a negative relationship similarly faculty interaction if it is more the time taken should be less. So, it is a negative relationship. So, minus 8 point now if you look this looks to be the highest correlation right second it looks to be the mother education which is highest correlated year of graduation uh, uh, is uh, and father's education is very very poorly correlated family income is also correlated right. Now, among the others you can see like for example, mother's education and father's but this is not of our interest ok. So, let us go back to the data set now, now how do I run my stepwise regression. So, uh, regression I go to analyze linear so, but this is my dependent variable and I take all my independent variables here right. So, I have taken all my independent I will ask the computer to do it for me now. So, statistics so I need to see here you can check for you know uh, descriptives uh, partial correlation right. If you want if you have a doubt you can check for quality diagnostics also what will it give you it will tell you the multi quality problem right. So, why uh, let us go to R square change also. So, continue uh, I do not want to save anything. So, I just want to run it. So, this is the same correlation thing that you had seen I had shown you right. Now, let us go down this is the descriptive statistic look at the years graduation uh, the graduating time is 5 the mean is 5 years standard deviation is this much education of mother is around 5.45 1.5. So, these are some of the uh, descriptive statistics. Now, you see as I said the difference between a forward selection method and a stepwise selection method was what that in the forward selection method you do not omit or remove any variable right all are entered, but in the stepwise you may remove the variable after you take the combined effect and see which one is not ex now ex now contributing ok. So, let us see all my uh, dependent variable is year of uh, time to graduate and my all the other variables are entered ok. So, I did it only a stepwise enter I would have directly entered all them all of them into one. So, but I am interested to do a stepwise. So, I should have done this ok. So, this will not change right now let us go down. So, uh -huh, you see that was in that it was not showing anything, but here you see. So, what it says first faculty interaction was taken. So, you can do it the way from the correlation also you can see that highest relationship was between years of graduation and faculty interaction right. So, you can do that second mother's education third family income fourth father's education and this was the uh, the way it the data was entered. So, now the model was created like this. So, the first case faculty interaction was taken second case faculty interaction and mother's education was taken third faculty interaction mother's education and family income was taken fourth all the four were taken, but in the fifth case faculty interaction was removed why because faculty interaction is because of the presence of this now in the combined effect is coming down. But if you remember this was the first model this was first variable that was entered that means it was the most powerful uh, you know uh, case, but still it is removed right. Now, let us look at the r square values. So, when I am using only the in the first model case you see the r square r square is this much and r square change will remain the same. So, look at the change in the first model to second model 788 696 788 improved 875 fourth model 918 and fifth one 916. So, the difference is hardly any difference and this is non significant right. So, 
the stepwise model this is a problem although it has told you some information it has given you the problem is that the, the variable which was the highest predictor or the best predictor now itself has been removed from the model the final model. So, this is what is the problem with the stepwise regression right. right. So, you see now this is what I wanted to show you. So, look at this model right. So, this is the coefficients this is the t values right. So, faculty interaction the t minus 13 then you can look at it as it is improving right. So, uh, the significance value you see the fourth model come to the fourth you can you see you can see here the faculty interaction is becoming non significant. So, that means it has got no effect right. So, in the fifth one it has been removed, but when you removed it what has happened has it has it done any good we cannot say right. So, but at least I know one thing that the variable which was contributing my highest is no more a part of my final model. So, how can it be considered as a good model? So, that is the problem which is happening in the in the stepwise regression ok. Now, what I will do is we will go back to the PPT. So, this is how you do right. Uh, so, this is how. So, this was the table which would have come from the same table I have copied here and pasted right. So, interpretation the inspection of correlation between the variables in the correlation table shows that mother's education, parents income, faculty interaction are all highly correlated, but father's education is only slightly correlated 0 0.04 something it was there. Also most of the predictor variables are correlated with each other with one correlation coefficient as high as 0 0.747 you can see 0 0.747. So, which is 0 0.4747 faculty interaction with mother's education this one, but if you look at the years of graduation. So, this is high this is very poor fathers and this is also high and this is highest ok. But ultimately in your final model it is being removed and this is how the final model looks like right and interestingly you see this is what I was saying is. Yes. So, in the last model in the last the E 1 2 3 4 5 A B C D E last same right here this faculty interaction variable now has is not present here right it has been removed but it was my highest uh, uh, predictor best predictor earlier. So, uh, this is what it says variables removed ok. The predictor variable that is the highest r with the criterion variable dependent variable faculty interaction is the first variable entered. However, the final model does not include and it has become insignificant thus stepwise regression results in a bad model or a awkward model you can say not a bad I would not say awkward model that does not include the predictor variable that is the highest correlation. So, sometimes this can create a trouble, but this problem can be eradicated by using a hierarchical multiple regression method. Now, what is the difference between these two I will just maybe describe because I have I am shortage I am running short of time I will and I will run it in the next class. So, similar to the stepwise regression the hierarchical regression is also a sequential process involving the entry of predictor variables in the in steps, but the order of variable entry is based on theory see this is the difference earlier you were doing on basis of some uh, the variance explained or the the correlation or something right the t value, but here the computer is not doing anything here you are thinking okay, which should be the logically the one which should be taken together. So, the researcher chooses the order to enter the variables based on the theory and the past research this is the basic difference between stepwise and hierarchical regression. So, hierarchical regression is an appropriate tool for analysis when variance on a criterion variable is being explained by predictor variables that are correlated with each other. Suppose there are variables which are correlated with each other for example, x 1, x 2, x 3, x 2 and x 3 are correlated. So, then you have to consider that while doing the analysis. It is a very popular method used to analyze the effect of a predictor variable after controlling for the other variables. Now, how do we control? I will show you. This control is nothing but it is achieved by calculating the change in the adjusted r square at each step of the analysis. So, at each step we will measure the r square and see whether there is an improvement or there is no improvement. Okay. So, the researcher defines order of entry for the variables based on theory right. Sets are independent variables are entered in blocks. So, 
may be a block can be only one variable also or it could be a combination of two or three variables right which theoretically it says that they should go together right and the r square change is measured may enter sometimes nuisance variables first to control for them then test the purer effect of the next block of important variables right use your it is manually you can use your logic so theory is always the most important thing here so it's is a way to show if variables of your interest explain a statistically significant amount of the variation variance in your dependent variable after accounting for all other variables so it takes into account how much of variance is being explained this is a framework for model comparison now this is very very important term you should understand it helps you not only to statistically test but tells you which model is the best model right in this framework you build several regression models by adding variables to a previous model at each step okay same like stepwise only here up to this much but only difference is that you are using your logic here theory in many cases our interest is to determine whether newly added variables show a significant improvement in r square so here i would tell you something before i uh, you know cross over or uh, stop it so, uh, now this improvement in r square which i uh, am thinking of is uh, there you must have heard of this word r square and adjusted r square right so i'll try to just explain the difference between these two so what is this r square i don't get a space how do i measure r square r square is equal to what now 1 minus sum of square of the error variable divided by sum of square of total correct so, when in a regression equation let us say y is equal to a plus b 1 x 1 plus b 2 x 2 and I go on increasing as I increase my number of independent variable up to x n see some or the other correlation will be there. So, as you improve the increase the number of variables the r square will go on increasing right because it is not possible that there is completely no relation in social science it is next to impossible okay but then that is a very dangerous thing so if i am using a, that means even if, if it is contributing 0 0.0001 still it is being taken and uh, being added as a new variable and my r square is increasing so r square can sometimes be a very uh, you know uh, confusing uh, variable so instead of doing that so we use another which is called the adjusted r square which you must have seen in all the results section right so what is the formula for this adjusted r square let me tell you 1 minus 1 minus r square right into n minus 1 divided by n minus k uh, p minus 1 right now you see now what is this p the p is the number of the independent predictors or independent variables so number of predictors okay so as i said to you if my if I am increasing a variable from suppose there were earlier 5 variables and now I am using let us say 6 variables. So, what will happen? So, automatically my r square will tend to increase right. So, if my r square is increasing right. So, 1 minus r square this value and into n minus 1 divided by n minus p minus 1. So, what has happened at one side my r square is increasing, but the other side since this is the denominator if it is increasing this will reduce the entire value. So, the adjusted r square gets somewhere normalized or adjusted with this one side increase of the r square and the uh, you know uh, increase in the denominator which pulls down the entire value. So, in the process if, if the value is not contributing much right it is not contributing much so this becomes more dominating right and as it becomes more dominating obviously what happens the r square value does not increase rather it may start falling if the if the new variable is not contributing significantly to the uh, study right so therefore it is always advised to use the adjusted r square instead of the r square during any research study well what i'll do is i will uh, uh, carry on this session in the next lecture where I will explain the hierarchical uh, regression little bit more and I will uh, show you how to conduct it on the uh, you know uh, SPSS okay okay thank you very much. Mm -hmm.